What up, though? It's your boy Bill. I got on my What the Feezy shirt. Finally came in the mail yesterday, and I'm loving it. I got my What the Feezy slippers on. I'm going to let y'all see them. Man, make sure y'all support your boy, Bills with a Z, BillsClothing.org. Go check me out. Um, I appreciate y'all on Patreon. Um, my new Instagram is Bill underscore Feezy. And uh, yeah, let's jump right into this. So, I'm about to tell y'all about this white boy named Outlaw. Now, Outlaw was a ghost face. For those of you who don't know what ghost face is, it's a white game. Uh, I don't know if this is something that's on the streets also, because to be honest, I never heard of it until about, um, I never heard of Ghostface until like 2016, you know, I was locked up. So I kind of think it's something that, you know, was created in a prison or in a jail or something like that. Cause I had been locked up for years, never seen or heard of it. But Around like 2016, you know, you start seeing white boys saying, I'm Ghostface, I'm Ghostface, I'm Ghostface. So they say they're not um, prejudiced. They're not a, a, a race group far as against other races and stuff like that. They say they're not with none of that. They say they're not against no race, but they're for their race. That's what one of them told me out their own mouth. So I respect stuff like that because... I can say, you know, I'm for these, I'm not against no other race, but I'm for my race. I can say that and not be labeled prejudiced. So I can go for that if that's what it really was going on. But I kind of think, you know, you meet so many people affiliated with something and you kind of get your own little gist of it and what's really going on and what it really means and all that. So um, I think uh, I think the way it, it came about, it was created, I think they got together and was like, you know what, bro? We need to come up with something just for us. Like, just the same way, you know, all the other groups and gangs, whatever you want to call it, came about and was like, the, the original reasons these gangs was made, like, okay, we got to stand up against oppression. We got to protect our community. We got to stand up against these crooked police. And, you know, they created all the gangs that we know about nowadays. I believe the Ghostface had the same mindset, but it was more so on the thing like we got to protect ourselves and stand up against them. And when I say them, I mean us. And the reason, the reason I believe that is because, bro, and this is just no lie. There's no cap. And before anybody go up talking crazy, I'm not prejudiced, I'm not racist, I'm not none of that. I'm just speaking facts about something that I seen. The reason I believe that's how it came about is because, bro, once upon a time, I promise you, once upon a time, a white boy got no love in the Georgia prison system. I mean, no love. I mean, bro, once upon a time, like, you better not even go to commissary for more than two, three dollars, or somebody finna take it. Somebody finna beat you up. All the all the booty bandits, you automatically they target. If if somebody just in a bad mood today and they need a punching bag, they coming to you. I'm dead serious. It was like that once upon a time. So, you know, as time went by, you know, dynamics started changing a little bit because you got some white boys that stand up. But even if, okay, even if you stand up and you built like that, what you gonna do with me and three, four of my homeboys? You're not gonna do nothing with us. So I think that's what it was, man. They they just got tired of the the our people, the ignorant ones who was just doing crazy stuff to them, and you know just getting tired of getting mistreated, chumped off, handled any kind of way. Because when the when the when the dude when a when a black dude get to arguing with a white dude in the Georgia prison. Damn near the first thing he going to say, you a white boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to always look at it like, okay, man, he still got fists. He still got a ratchet. He's still a grown man just like you. What that supposed to mean? But that's how people feel towards it. So, um, 
back on Outlaw. I, I met Outlaw in 2020, I believe. He came in the dawn. Bald head. Well, he can actually grow his hair out, but he usually shave his head. Kind of short. He, I'm 5'11". He probably about 5'9". Little stocky. Couple tattoos in his face. White boy. He, the white boy, he really looked, he kind of looked cool, right? Like, he looked like he's straight, quiet, just mind his business, don't bother nobody. So the same day he came in the dorm, my roommate was like, hey, bro, you know who just moved in the room that's Dota is, right? I'm like, who? He like, that's Outlaw. I'm like, okay, who the hell is Outlaw? He like, bro, that white boy crazy, bro. You got to watch him. He crazy, bro. So I'm like, you must know him from somewhere. He like, yeah, I know him. Now, my roommate at the time was a white boy. Now, he he all the way gangster. I ain't going to lie to you. He, he, he's really living like that. But, you know, you's a white boy. He's a white boy. So it's like, I'm thinking like, maybe you're, maybe you're like, you know, speaking him like, in your mind, the way you might be speaking him up and, you know, feeling like he's so this, in my mind, I might be like, man, that's nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, oh, okay. And, bro, I started getting calls from dudes in different dorms. Like, hey, ABM, hey, like, yo, man, white boy named Outlaw just came in your dorm. This happened from, like, three different dorms. I'm like, yeah, why, what's up? They like, man, we've been calling around the whole compound. We trying to see what dorm he went in. I'm like, yeah, he in my dorm. What's up? Conference call, bro. So a few of my homeboys, they call like in a in a group call. You know what I'm saying? Like three way. He called me. He three way him. He told me three way him. It's probably about four five of us on the phone. So they tell me. They say, Bill. I say, yo. They say, listen, bro. The white boy is shot out. He is all the way thrown off. And he really, really, really has a strong dislike for our kind of people. I said, all right, well, shit, he ain't the only one thrown off and you know that'll get active. They say, listen to me, though. This dude don't just swing the ratchet just to swing the ratchet. When he swing the ratchet, he trying to take you all the way out the game, and he's not thinking twice about it. He already got a life sentence without the el without eligible for parole. He don't care about nothing. They say he killed like four people on the streets. He came into the Jackson Diagnostic Prison, got into it with a black dude, whacked him right then and there. I'm talking about whacked him, it's over with. They put him on high max for so many years. He came off of high max and came to this prison. And the dorm, he was just in. See, he was in the dorm before he got to my dorm. They say he came to that dorm, got into it with his roommate, which was another dude of color, whacked him. I'm talking about over with. When the police came and locked everybody down, they took him out and put him in my dorm. Now, it's not making sense to me because if you, like, even when you bust somebody, bro, you about to be locked down. If you get caught, they're locking you down for a while. But if you bust somebody and whack them and talk about they don't wake back up, bro, you're not just leaving out one damn dorm and going into the next. Your ass is finna be locked in a room by yourself for a whole lot of years, a whole lot of years. But the prison I was at was so crooked like it wouldn't it it didn't it didn't make me think all the way 100% like, no, nah, that ain't true. But I was thinking like, bro, ain't no way, but at the same time I'm like, well, I know where I'm at and I know these folks really don't give a damn, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, she he probably did do that. So now, instantly, I'm thinking it's a setup. If, if this man just whacked somebody and it's all the way over with, why the hell would y'all put him straight in another dorm so he could do it again to somebody else? Then y'all put him in a the room directly next to me. 
And I I was already having little issues with the administration. So I started getting paranoid. I'm like, oh, they trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what they trying to do. So my roommate telling me that him and dude had gotten to it. They used to be cool. And then a couple years later, Outlaw finessed his girl on the phone out of like $200. So when dude caught up with Outlaw at another prison years later, he said, man, they pushed up on Outlaw like 15 deep. They all got ratchets out, all that. And the man told me Outlaw stood firm. He ain't run. He ain't try to go nowhere. He ain't try to get ghosts. He ain't try to do none of that. They say the man stood firm with his ratchets out. And he was like, hey, man, we just going to have to do what we got to do. And one of the guys from my roommate's side was able, you know, they talked it out. Outlaw uh, sent dude the money back. And they just squashed it. Then they hadn't seen each other for years. So now they finally seeing each other again. So it was like a thing like, I'm asking my roommate, like, so how do you feel? Do you feel like you got to do something to him? Or do you feel like y'all going to be straight? Or you just ain't going to say nothing to him or what? And he was like, nah, I'm just, you know, I'm going to just really not say nothing to him. He was like, but we used to be real, real close, bro. It kind of hurt me that he did that, played them games about that money. Make a long story short. Outlaw and my roommate end up getting cool. We're talking about end up getting cool again like that, like tight. So now Outlaw is in my room damn near every day. It was something about Outlaw, bro. You know what's crazy? The dude was so cool, but I felt like I couldn't trust him. Like, he used to make me uncomfortable when he come around. Like, he was the type of person that when he came in the room and be like, what's up, CBL? The first thing I do is go to looking for my ratchet. Make sure it's right there next to me. If it's in my pocket, I feel my pocket. Just make sure my ratchet right there. Just because of, you know, a lot of things I done heard about him. And after him being cool with my roommate, you know, just hearing certain stuff come out of his mouth. Now, I'm not going to lie. I did not get a prejudice vibe from him. I didn't feel like he didn't like our people. That's just not something I got. When I look in his eyes, I, I don't see that. You know what I'm saying? But I did I did see when I looked in his eyes, like, like his soul is gone or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he just, he a ticking bomb, but I didn't get the, oh, he hate this people because of their race. I didn't get that. So eventually he started coming buying stuff from me. He started using my phone to do stuff. And it's like, I started feeling like he was all right, but I never let my guard down. Like, whenever he came around, it was still just something in the room that, you know, came about the room that um, made me feel like, man, you better keep that ratchet on you, you know what I'm saying? It was probably three or four other ghost face dudes in the dorm at the time. This is when I, like, so... I see, like, when he first came in, he'd call, like, little meetings with them and stuff. You know what I'm saying? His room. They had little meetings and stuff. But they wasn't, like, like at first, they used to look at him, yeah, big homie this, big homie that. But then they wasn't, you know, they wasn't as tight and as close as they were supposed to be or whatever. Stuff was just looking strange. So then I started hearing all the whispering about Outlaw. I started hearing that um, he ain't official. The ghost face over the state, Ben blackballed him and kicked him out. He lying, saying he created ghost face. He didn't create nothing. But the funny thing about it is nobody there checked him or confronted him about that. Nobody pulled up on him and said, bro, you saying you started this? You lying. You know you did. All the whispers I was hearing, it never was brought to this man's face because they know he about crazy. But my thing is this. I give a damn how crazy you is. If we stand on the same thing and you're straight up faking the funk, bro, you got to be dealt with accordingly. So I didn't really know if Outlaw wasn't official or if they was just talking crazy. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what they had going on. We sitting in the room one day Outlaw was geeked up on the cream, him and my roommate. 
This is the first time I seen Outlaw looking totally different. I came in there, his eyes did. He looking crazy. He got this big axe in his hand. Now, the man done made an axe some type of way. Now, I, I had been hearing beating, boom, 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 for like the past week or so. You know, he be breaking metal, making little ratchets with it and stuff. But it was a real life axe. The man broke the broomstick off, had the handle, you know, as a long piece of wood. And at the end of it, it was a real axe, bro. He literally cut that metal out to the form of an axe, a real axe. And it looked very sharp. And he looking crazy. He told me, look, CBL, look what I made. Look what I made. You know what I'm saying? And I look at it. I feel it. It's heavy as hell. Then he got another long ratchet he's showing me. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I'm doing is making sure I got mine on me. So it was a guy named Ghost. Okay. I can't remember Ghost's real name, but Ghost was a ghost face. He was in the dorm before Outlaw was in the dorm. Um, Ghost had a beard, white boy, kind of swole, had hair on his head, had a big old beard, tattoos everywhere. Ghost stay fighting. Every time you turn around, Ghost fighting somebody. Every single time you turn around, Ghost is fighting somebody. So, one day Ghost come out. All his, he cut all the facial hair off his face, mustache and everything. Cut his hair down low. Um, he stopped working out. He start wearing his clothes super, super, super tight. He got little bracelets around his ankles. And he done changed up his voice. And he's he's like literally talking feminine. Like he's trying to sound like a girl, trying to walk like a girl, everything. Ghost done made a big statement and announcement saying, don't nobody call him Ghost no more. I believe his real name was Michael. I'm not sure, but I believe that's what it was. And he said for everybody to start calling him Michelle. So while Outlaw in the room with the acts and stuff, he said, yeah, man, old Michelle gonna come tell me uh, he don't wanna be Ghostface no more. He don't want to live this type of life. He don't want to hurt people no more. He he just want to live for God and do the right thing, what he's supposed to do. And going to have the nerve to tell me he's just coming out. He's living his true life. He's not faking the funk no more. And going to tell me that he's really a girl. He know he's meant to be a girl. And, and going to tell me, please don't feel no type of way about it. So he went to smiling and giggling. So I'm like, I had already seen and heard what the dude Ghost had going on anyway. So I'm like, that's crazy. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So Outlaw was like, yeah, I'm going to leave him alone, all right? I'm going to leave him alone. I'm going to leave him alone. And I wanted to say, Outlaw, bro, don't get yourself in no more trouble, bro. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I mean, how much more trouble can he get in? You know what I'm saying? Like, literally, how much more trouble can he get in? So, uh. You know, a few hours go by. My roommate, I come in the room, my roommate sitting there looking like this. He looking crazy. He like, bro, bro. I'm like, what, what's going on? He like, man, this dude outlaw, bro. This dude, bro, he, he crazy, bro. You know, I don't like, I don't really like hurting people, causing harm to people, bro, but I don't know, bro. I don't know if I agree with what he got going on. So I was like, what you mean, what, what he doing now? He was like, the man talking about since ghosts want to be a girl, he going to let him be a girl. He said he going to leave him alone. He ain't going to mess with him about leaving the ghost face game, but he's going to help him reach his goals to being a girl a little quicker. So I'm like, what the hell you mean he going to help him reach his goal a little quicker? How is he going to do that? He said, Outlaw said, instead of waiting for ghosts to get out and go get some type of surgery to have his thing chopped off, he said he gonna cut it off on. So I'm like, what? I'm like, man, watch out, bro. You know, usually I laugh. I didn't even laugh at that. I'm like, bro, watch out, bro. He like, bro, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious, bro. That's on my mama. I'm dead serious. So 
I'm like, dang, that's crazy. He said he gonna do what to do? So uh, it kind of like slipped my mind. I'm busy doing stuff, but I had a lot of stuff going on. So, you know, just throughout the day, I'm doing all kind of stuff. Earlier that day, I had let Outlaw use my phone. He told me his people was gonna send me $200. And you know when they sent it, he was going to buy something from me. So this is probably later that night. So I'm laying in the bed. So somebody texts me and say, is this the right cash app? And they had my cash app. So I text back and said, yeah. And next thing you know, $200 came. And in the comment, it said, for Outlaw. So the dude texts me and said, hey, I sent that for Outlaw. I said, okay, cool. I'm about to go give it to him. So I got up. I went next door. I knocked on the door twice. And then I pulled the door open. I'm finna let Outlaw know this money came. Bro, when I pulled the door open, all right, it's a curtain pull. You know, I already told y'all how to set up a curtain. You just tie a string from the vent to the box, put a sheet over it, pull it how you want to. That's your curtain. It's a curtain hanging. And, like, you could probably see, like, this much in the cell. All I seen was when I opened the door, the lights was off, but it was a it was a night light at the end of the bed. I'll do another video telling y'all about a night light, how they make them. I don't feel like going into all that. But it was a night light. So you know the room is like dim light. I could see in the room, but I could still see it's dark. It's a Mexican dude that was in my dorm. He had a skull cap on and he had a some type of sheet or something tied around his face. All you can see is his eyes. All right, when I pulled the door open, I could see the side of him, and I could hear, mm, 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 mm. so I know somebody was trying to scream, but they, you know, their mouth was covered up or whatever was going on. The Mexican dude turned and looked at me and was like, hold on, fool, hold on, fool, when he did like that. His whole hand had blood on it. He like, hold on, fool. Hold on, fool. So I'm like, I hurry up and close the door. You know what I'm saying? So I went back in my room, and I'm like, what the? But I didn't see Outlaw. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, man, what the hell? So I called my roommate, and I'm like, hey. I told him what I just seen. He was like, yeah, man, I told you. I told you what they got going on, man. I told you. He said, man, Outlaw in there, sticking a broom stick up the man and, and chop this thing off. He said he want to be a girl and he want to leave the game and that's what he get. That's what it's going to have to be. So I'm like, what? Oh, hell no. Nah. Now nah, it's like, I'm getting uncomfortable, bro. Like, I don't even want you like in a room next, like, next door to me, bro. Knowing you do crazy stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I done been around some, some wicked in the mind people you know what i'm saying but i don't know stuff like that always make me feel uncomfortable bro like, i just don't be wanting to be that close to you like next though so i'm telling my roommate like bro i told him straight up i'm like listen i ain't gonna tell you who you can and can't be cool with bro but any situation bro this man try anything funny if he even you know give me the wrong impression like he trying something funny we got to take him all the way down through there. I'm talking about no games being played, no, none of that. Got to take it there. So he like, all right, you already know I'm on the same type of page or whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. After that situation happened, now Ghost, a.k.a. Michelle, been in his room for weeks. I'm talking about he's not even coming out to go to the chow hall or none of that. He's in his room. So I about knew that that's what had happened. And my roommate later told me, Outlaw really did cut it off and flush the diamond toilet. And stuck a broomstick inside the man and held it there for a while. So I'm like, well, that white boy is crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? Now Outlaw and my roommate end up getting more cool. And Outlaw came over there one day, he said, CB, bro, how old are you, bro? I was like, I think I was 26 at the time. I said, I'm 26. He said, bro, I just want to let you know real talk, bro. I really respect you, bro. I got a lot of love for your roommate. I know your roommate got love for you, so I ultimately got love for you. He said, bro, you a young dude. You grinding. You getting your money. 
you stay out of everybody's way. You don't be on none of that BS. You don't be fake kicking it. You don't be doing none of that crazy sucker stuff. He said, bro, I just want to let you know I got a lot of respect for you. He said, I'm going to just keep it all the way 100 with you about something. I said, what's up? He said, bro, I got some issues. I got some real issues, and I like to kill people. He said, I, I really enjoy it, bro. He like, I was just out there living a good life. You know, I had a beautiful wife, a big, beautiful house in Covington, Georgia. I had two businesses I ran. And, bro, the stuff I got locked up for that I got accused of doing, he said, bro, I honestly didn't do it. He said, the stuff that I've been accused of doing in prison, I really did do it because that's just been my way of venting, getting it off my chest. He said, bro, I got beautiful kids. Everything that I just had on the streets, I just lost it, bro, because somebody made a bad decision and it took my whole life from me, bro. He was telling me about his wife. He said, bro, she want to ride it out with me. I told her, go live your life. I don't want to hold your life up. And he said, bro, so I really be like, depressed, miserable, bro, and he said, and all the people that do fake stuff or crooked stuff or lame stuff, I just want to take their life. He said, bro, that's what make me feel good. He said, so since I know you a good dude, you a genuine dude, bro, I'm going to tell you right now from this point, you ain't never, ever got to get your hands dirty, bro. Never. He said, bro, you got any issue with anybody. I don't care who it is. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it's about. He said, I don't even care if you didn't have an issue with him. And you want me to do it to him? He said, bro, tell me. I promise you I'll do it. He said, I promise you I'll do it, bro. You don't owe me a penny. He said, you won't owe me a penny. Only thing I will ask, you know, if I get caught and go to the hole, you know, just send me something to smoke. Send me a little cream back there or something like that. He said, bro, but I got a lot of respect for you, bro. And you ain't never got to get your hands dirty again, CB. Bro, just keep grinding. Keep doing what you're doing. He asked me how much time I had. I told him at that time, you know, I probably had a little less than two years. He was like, bro, you ain't even got that much longer. I don't even want you getting in no trouble, bro. I know I'm going to be here regardless. He was like, if I kill somebody right now or if I don't never kill nobody again, I'm still never getting out. So I really don't care. He said, so, bro, you never got to get your hands dirty again, bro. And I'm like, you know, I really don't know how to take it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, okay, you telling me this, but I about know you about throw, so I don't really know, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, so I'm going to tell you what I do next. But you got to tune in to part two to check it out. Part two coming right behind this, though.